There are a lot of details in the theory of open economy equilibrium in the market for loanable funds when trade is allowed and in the market for foreign currency exchange that can be kind of lost in translation or, or that can be difficult to grasp hold of. So we're going to spend a few extra minutes just going through some of the details here that might not be uh, immediately, that might not be kind of immediately uh, kind of obvious as you're looking at these models. The first that we want to focus in on is this net capital outflow. So that's really the connector between these two different markets, the market for loanable funds and the market for foreign currency exchange. And here we were discussing what is net capital outflow. Well, it's the purchase of foreign assets by domestic residents minus the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents. And, and I had previously said that this net capital outflow is equal to net exports, that the goods and the services, the actual goods and services traded must be balanced out by the by the kind of cash and assets that are used to purchase those goods and services in the first place. And so we want to kind of think through, well, what's actually happening here on this market? Or, or what is what are we actually thinking about here? Because we know that this is the supply of the dollars, and I'll just kind of highlight again down here in the market for foreign currency exchange. I don't want you to get confused here. This isn't the quantity of, of all dollars in the market. This is the quantity of, of dollars or the, qu the quantity of currency that is needed in the foreign currency exchange market, right? So this would just be for exports and imports, which is uh, kind of a subset of the economy, right? This isn't like the Fed where uh, we're looking for the full kind of demand for, for money there. So I just want to kind of uh, qualify that as we're thinking about it. So let's think about this in a few different uh, ways. We've got net exports and uh, net capital outflows and let's just kind of think about the case of a trade surplus. So let's say we've got a trade surplus. Oh, surplus. And what is a trade surplus? So you might also see that marked as net exports are greater than zero, right? And because why is that? Well, we know that a trade surplus would be a case where the exports, ex exports are greater than the imports. We are sending more goods overseas that are being purchased than we are purchasing goods that are made overseas by by foreign uh, manufacturers and by foreign makers. So what is this kind of how does this connect to net capital outflows? Okay, so here's the key. When the exports are greater than imports, then what are we doing? Well, that means that we are sending our goods overseas. And so let's say I, I don't know, right? Like the case of the Ford Motor Company and they're going to sell a uh, Ford Escape overseas in some other country, let's say China. Well, what do they do? They sell that Ford Escape in China, and let's say that our exports are greater than imports, so in mass we're doing more of this overseas, and what do they get? Well, they get some amount of Chinese currency in exchange for that Ford uh, for that Ford Escape. And so now the Ford Motor Company is just holding on to a bunch of Chinese currency, right? And that's really what we're kind of balancing here in the net capital outflows. So what are we then thinking of in the net capital outflows to make this balance? That means that the purchase of foreign assets by domestic residents is greater than the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents, right? What is that? The domestic residents in this case would be the Ford Motor Company and the purchase of the foreign assets. Well, that's in the simplified example, that's the Chinese currency that they are then holding, right? It, like we said, it kind of balances here. So what would that then lead to? Well, if, if we have cases where exports are greater than imports, that means that the foreign asset purchase, and I'll just kind of list this out, that means that the foreign asset purchase or hold, or holdings is another way to think about this is greater than the domestic right domestic asset purchase or asset holdings and that means that this top portion is greater than this bottom portion so if the bottom portion is is subtracted out right the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents is subtracted out that means that this would be a net positive and so this would work out when we have a case of a trade surplus that also means that we have net capital outflows that are greater than zero as well, right? We have net capital outflows that are positive. We have net capital out outflow uh, kind of positive as well. I, I'll kind of use that same terminology. And so what does that look like here? Well, that would be greater amounts of net capital outflow. And so this would be kind of moving, uh, th right? This would be moving this direction. And so here, net capital outflow, this would be where we're running a trade, trade, 
surplus. Try to, I know this is getting a little tight in there, but hopefully you can see the difference there. So I'm not saying it's only this area, but I'm just saying anytime we're running a trade surplus, we're moving more, we're moving further this direction, right? And we can kind of think through how that then interacts with the real exchange rate. I'm sorry, with the real interest rate that we're thinking about here. We can also think about the exact opposite as well, right? So let's say that that's a trade, we've got a trade deficit. And what is a trade deficit? Well, you might see it marked as net exports are less than zero. And what is that? Well, that's the case where we have imports that are greater than exports. So I'll just write it the same way. Exports, right, are less than imports. Which means that we are now purchasing domestically a lot of goods that are made in other countries. And what are we doing when we do that? Well, we are giving other countries our dollars. And that means that those other countries, those foreign residents, are now holding a lot of our dollars, right? And so this negative portion is increasing relative to this positive portion. This is becoming more negative, right? It's kind of canceling out. And so if we want to just simplify this as well, I won't write all of this out, but we'll just say that the, that in a case of trade deficits, our net capital outflow is less than zero, right? It's kind of canceling. It's it's becoming more negative here because uh, because of this because of these imports that we are purchasing. And what does that look like over here? Well, this would be the net capital outflow, and and this would be kind of this area over here where we where we're moving towards this direction and and moving this direction on net capital outflows. This is where we would be talking about a trade trade deficit here. And so you can think about that demand, kind of that what is that net capital outflow relationship as as the real interest rate is increasing or decreasing. Well, why would it matter? It partly matters because there's two different scenarios that we would be in. It would be closer to a trade deficit or closer to a trade surplus, right? Kind of depending on where we are. So that's one like the main thing that we want to think through on how this balances out. And then the next thing we'll kind of think through is, well, how does that then work to this market for foreign currency exchange?